There's only one spot left. For what? For the VBS sign up. I wanted to sign up for that. Could you take me? The church is real close. It's all mine, buddy. <laughs> Come on. Open it. Cell five. Well, if you didn't know, we need VBS helpers, all right? And so on a table back there in the foyer, uh, there's a place where if you want to help with VBS, you can sign up to be a volunteer. Also, if you want your kid or grandkid to be a part of VBS, you can sign them up back there as well. And if you have any questions, please see Miss Tracy. All right, Brother Dave. It's so good to see you this morning. Before I, I say a word about our senior adults, I want to acknowledge that last <coughs> night our deacons hosted a banquet for widows and widowers, and I think we had about 20 of those present along with deacons and their wives. Uh, this is one of the ministries our deacons have with our church family, and we're so grateful for that. But today is Senior Adult Day in the life of our church usually the first Sunday in May each year, and we want to welcome and acknowledge our senior adults. They're some of our most faithful attenders, some of our most generous givers financially to the life of the uh, ministry of the church and the Lord's work, and very dedicated in their service to the Lord. So if you are a senior adult and willing to admit it, we want you to stand right now as we honor you. <clears throat> that, that's a good, good part of our congregation this morning. Uh, for the sake of our pace setters group, we usually start at about 55 for senior adults. And by the way, those of you who were standing, we have a luncheon in your honor today after the service. Uh, for all of our senior adults, even if you did not sign up, I'm told that we have extra food. So you're welcome to join us in the whale after the service for a luncheon prepared by our own folks, a catered meal, but catered by our own folks and be served. You'll go in and sit at the tables. They'll actually bring the food to your tables uh, there in the whale. So we look forward to that. This morning, as we begin our service, I'd like for you to take the hymnal from the pew rack, if you remember what one of those are, <laughs> and in the very back of the hymnal, you'll find a section called Responsive Readings, and I'd like for you to turn to Responsive Reading number 707, about dedication. Certainly our senior adults exhibit dedication to the service of the Lord, but dedication is something that we all should have. I will read the lighter print, and then I encourage you to read the bold print in response. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. 
For by the grace given to me, I bid everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. In one body, we have many members, and all the members do not have the same function. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. In prophecy, in proportion to our faith, in service, in our serving, he who teaches is his teaching. He who exhorts in his exhortation, he who contributes in liberality, he who gives aid with zeal, he who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. That love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another, showing honor. Never flag or lag in zeal. Be aglow with the Spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in your hope. Be, be patient in your tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Amen. What a beautiful sound to hear God's people reading God's Word. Let's go to Him now in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful this morning to be here to worship You. We thank You for our senior adults whom we honor today. We recognize that they're so faithful in their attendance, in their giving, in their service to the Lord, as many teach Sunday school, serve on various committees, mow grass, and do so many other things for your kingdom service. Thank you for them. Bless them with good health and continued usefulness in your kingdom's work. And bless our worship today as Brother Kirk and others lead us now. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Would you stand with us together this morning? Let's sing this together.
makes in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. And wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. Come on, sing it out. Singing high. is our Savior's love for us. If we only knew how good His love towards us was, we would stand amazed. And so um, this morning, I hope you know I, I'm not replacing Miss Nancy. Uh, Lord help us, okay? But uh, Miss Nancy's mom had a, a small stroke last night, and so they're at the hospital uh, this morning. So that's why I'm doing this. But, um, it, it, you know, what we've been praying is, God, you're the God of healing. You're uh, God of all power. And this, nothing has caught you ever by surprise, right? And so we can say that, Father, based on the authority of your word, you can touch her in this moment and heal her. Uh, but, Father, if you choose not to, you will heal her. However you want to heal her, you will heal her, whether it's here on earth or here, there in heaven. And so, but y'all pray for her this morning. And uh, 
But we're just going to praise the Lord. I love this song. It says, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit of one. Let's sing this together.
my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my soul. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What a heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving ceases, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that one day you paid our price, that one day you paid the debt that we couldn't even attempt to pay back. You bought us with their blood. So, Father, I thank you that in Jesus' name we could say it's in Christ alone that we have hope, we have freedom, we have peace. Every good and perfect thing comes from you. So, Father, we thank you this morning for who you are. Would you speak to our hearts in Jesus' name? In 
Christ, I'll stand. Amen. Amen. There's no other hope found in anything less than Jesus' blood and His righteousness. Amen. Well, we're going to turn to Nehemiah this morning. If you've been here for a while or you're just coming back, we've, uh, we, we, we landed in Nehemiah for about a year and a half and, and began to study and read. And then uh, Christmas came and we, we stepped out and then revival. And so all these little pieces had us out of Nehemiah, but we're going to get back in so we can maybe finish this book this year and start another book uh, next year. So this morning, the, 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 the thing is this, it's still, we still want to be changed, right? I want to be changed. I want to be different. I don't want to be the same. I want God to keep working and moving in me. But also, we want to see Him do something great in us, right? We want to see Him rebuild or build a legacy through us. A legacy of what? Faith. Legacy of faith that we can look back and to say, on this solid rock I stand. I stood on Jesus all through it. And through it all, I stood and I, I believed in Him. I trusted in Him. I walked with Him. And you know what that does? That builds a legacy of faith. And you just keep building upon that. But this morning, we're going to look at another little component inside there, the goodness of God. So anybody in here want to testify to the goodness of God? It's open mic, or you don't have a mic, but it's open to you to say something that... God has done, and you can testify to the goodness of God. Anybody? Your wife? That's a good one. Amen. Somebody said something over here. God loves me. He saved my soul. His faithfulness. Yes, ma'am. Delivered me from an addiction. Amen. Say it one more time, Blake. I'm sorry. Say it one more time. He brought us here, okay. Sometimes I can't pick up sometimes what y'all are putting down. All right. Yes. Protector and provider. Somebody else started over here. Healing. Hallelujah. Something over here. Well, he's a light in the darkness. Amen. He saved our soul, David. Amen. Best stress reliever there is. He's a healer. Yes, ma'am. Amen. He is our comforter. Peace with faith. Great I am. Okay. Mm. Amen. That's good. Giver of life with no end. Amen. He's our rescuer. Amen. Rescuer. Yes, sir. Deliverer of death. Amen. Anybody else? He loves us unconditionally. Good. Yes, ma'am. He answers prayer. Amen. Y'all on a roll. That's how it should be. We should be knowing the goodness of God, where He's delivered us from and where He's bringing us to. That's good. Anybody else? Amen. That's right. Amen. He brought our son back to life. If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. He's the same today and tomorrow and forever. He's always there. Amen. Keeps his promises, and I heard something. Praise his holy name. Amen, Miss Jerry. Anybody? Stabilize cancer. Amen. Amen. Boy, don't get in that car and say, I forgot I should have said how good God is. Giving you the opportunity. He's our source of strength and endurance. Amen. He fights our battles. His grace. Amen. It's good. Walking again. Amen. He gives us hope. That's right. Junior high students, I don't know, man. I I wouldn't want to teach you guys. (laughs) They're hard to teach. 
They're hard to teach. And then our ladies in our nursery, man, when I first got here, I had some of them tell me, man, they've been here for, de- you know, just decades, tens of tens of tens of tens of years where it just grew and grew and grew, where it, it, before they knew it, they'd been in there 50, 60 years rocking babies. That's a legacy of faith, seeing a need, going back there, loving on those babies. And then, you know, a lot of our, our men, y'all, y'all probably have some memories that you have building the T-buildings. I've heard the stories of how the T-buildings got built and how they were put together and stuff like that. That's those buildings out over here, if you're new. It's some temporary buildings that are not temporary. They're right over here that we use and have Sunday school and different things. And then, you know, you go back and you look at the well and look how it was put together. And Brother Terrell, a team of men, I, I don't know who all, but they went in there and, and you probably part of it too weren't you yeah you know back there building that nation the people saw that they had sinned and 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 i'll I'll catch us up if you hadn't been here before but we're going to look at nehemiah 9 1 through 3 for a minute we'll read this one together we'll pray and we'll start now on the 24th day of this month the children of israel were assembled with fasting and in sackcloth with dust on their heads then those of the israelite lineage separated themselves From all foreigners, and they stood and confessed their sin and iniquities of their fathers. And they stood up in in their place, and they read from the book of the law of the Lord their God for one fourth of the day. And one fourth of the day they confessed and worshiped the Lord their God. Father, I, I pray that we can build a legacy like that, Lord, that we can see that we have failed, God, that we can see that we have sinned against you, a holy God. And Lord, you're faithful and just, just like somebody in here today said you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins you nailed them to the cross you remember them no more we thank you for that god keep moving in our hearts and lives lord let us be different than some of these that we read about today lord let us be faithful to the finish let us live this legacy of faith that you've put before us god we love you we thank you for loving us we ask it all in jesus name amen you may be seated So I'm going to try to do this recap. I'm going to try to look. This prayer of confession is from 5B. If if you're looking at 9, you turn over. And and then there's this 9B where where it starts in a day. Blessed. The priest is standing up. And they're they're all together in one accord, in one area. And he's saying this. Blessed be your gracious name, which is exalted above all blessings and praised. We had this thing this morning. It was called a responsive reading, right? That was, that was what we did on page 7, I think it was 707 or something in there, the responsive reading. That's what this was. It was a response to their sin. It was a response to where they had fallen away. It was a response to what they had done wrong. And they began, to, the, the priest would say it, and then they would say these things, You alone are Lord. You have made the heavens and the earth and all the hosts. So that they're responsively talking back and forth. So I just kind of want to get you where we are, and we're going to look all through it. But the recap of, of Ezra and Nehemiah, like I said, we started this series, I think about a year, year and a half ago, and, and we began to look at the building of a legacy, building of a faith, and, and putting it all back together, and just wanted to pick back up and to see uh, where we are, because ultimately, the 2022 I want us to do is to see God change us. That's where we're focusing. And you know what? The good thing is God's Word will change us. It'll it'll do what we can't do on our own. It'll it'll shape us and mold us if we get in the book and see what it is. And so I just want us to see it. One time, Ezra and Nehemiah were actually one book. It was just one book read together, but um, through translation from Latin to English, and Jerome changed it to, to two different books because it's two memoirs of two different men, their writing of what happened in the time of dispersion, the time of uh, Babylon, where they came in and destroyed, took them off into captivity. And so it's just their writings of what happened, these two men saying what it is that happened. Both of them told us one thing that I, I, I stuck to me. The children of God rebelled. You know, we're no different today. They rebelled. They, God would, you know, something would just, this massive catastrophe would happen in their life and they would turn back to God. And Man, when things got better, they, they would say, oh, it's good again. And, and they would just slowly, slowly 
slowly, slowly fade back to what they were doing before. Idolatry, self-gratification, all stems from rebellion and pride. It all just went back to rebellion and pride. They would just slowly fade right back into it. You know what? Then they would get in some kind of trouble, some kind of catastrophe, and they would cry out to a holy God. And you know what? He's faithful and just to listen to our prayer. He's faithful and just. He listens to his people. And you know what? He answered their prayer. He brought them back out of this or that, whatever's happening. And isn't it good that he never changes? He loves us so much that he just, every time we just slowly fade out and go into our own deal, he just, we call out to him. He saves us. He forgives us, and he, 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 he restores that relationship with us. So that's kind of about what I want us to see this morning. They rebelled against God. The people rebelled against God. And you know who else they rebelled against? Their leaders. They rebelled against... Remember, you go all the way back to the beginning of time. What did man do? Adam and Eve, they rebelled against God. He said, don't eat of this fruit, don't do this. They rebelled. Moses, they're getting brought out of slavery. They're being brought out of Egypt. Man, they just saw the Red Sea open. They walked through it and everything. And it doesn't take a little bit of time. They start grumbling at the leader. Moses, why did you bring us out here in this hot desert to kill us? And God, all that time, is sustaining them. He's providing for them. He's restoring. He's giving everything for them. But you know what? That rebellious spirit, it has to be broken. Our rebellious spirit has to be broken if we're going to follow God. Because, see, we have to be a slave to Him. We have to surrender all of our rights. You think you got rights? In the kingdom of God, we have zero. We have the right to say, Lord, I'm sorry. You have the right to say, God, steer me, lead me, guide me, direct me. But you know what? We're bond servants. Where he leads, I will go. Y'all sing the hymn, you know it. There's a hymn, too, that says it. Where he leads, we'll go. We need to stop being this rebellious people. You know what's awesome about God? He gave them exactly what they wanted they wanted freedom they wanted man I, I, I want to do my own thing i want to do what i want to do I want to say what i want to say go where i want to go and he said i tell you okay you don't want the provision the protection of god go ahead go off on your way and you know what what they thought they wanted was freedom but what they really found was slavery what they really found was bondage they were, they were encapsulated by their sin. They were, they were engulfed by their sin, and they couldn't get out of it on their own. And so what they do, what they always did, save us, forgive us, we rebelled, we've, we've turned our back on us. And so uh, this is kind of where we are in this, that, that, that the children of God had turned their back so far on Him, they were rebelled and, and done uh, worship false gods and everything. And so... They get drug off out into captivity. They leave the land where they were, the land of milk and honey, the, the promised land that God had given them, and they were drug off into another land where they were slaves to people, not to God anymore. They were slaves to people, off in this bondage. And so they were there some 70 years in captivity in Babylon. But they remember, y'all remember that story, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel and all that? That all happened like in the first part of it where they went off and, and they, the Babylonians came in, destroyed, burned the city, burned the temple, tore down the walls. See, Nehemiah and Ezra came back to rebuild. They're rebuilding the temple. If you remember, Ezra, they rebuilt the temple. So the temple's back. It's erected. It's in place. It's where it needs to be. They consecrated it back to God. They worshiped there again. Now they just needed the walls to come around the city because a city without walls is susceptible to its enemy to come in and to destroy and, and to attack. You're very vulnerable. And so they needed to put these walls back. And that's a lot of catching us up, isn't it? Well, we're not there. We, we still got to go because they came back in three different waves. First wave, they came back and, and started trying to see everything back together. The second wave, Ezra comes and, and, and he builds the temple. Third wave, they're coming back to build uh, the walls and put things back together. 
It was finally time that they wanted to obey the commands of God. They wanted to obey because they had found it. They had found the law. They began to read of it. They began to see the goodness of God, how he had uh, restored them, walked with them, transformed them, did a mighty work in their, in their midst. So they wanted to obey him. That's what this whole prayer is about in, in, in Nehemiah chapter 9 is a prayer to see um, the ordinances of what God had for them. You think about this. A lot of times throughout this walk of how they were going and what they were doing, they would bring God's standard down to their level, right? They would bring the worship, how they would worship, how they would do the different things. See, they knew the right command. They knew the right way they, to do it. God had given them clear commands in His Word how to live. But you know what? They brought God's standard down to their standard. That's moving the bar, right? Tony Evans tells the story of his son, Jonathan, 11 years old, comes into his dad. I don't know if y'all know Tony Evans reading his book. to his level. And that's exactly what we do. God has official standards, and we bring those standards down to our level that we can meet to it. Do you think, you think Tony applauded him and said, Well done, good job, Bubba. Good job, son. No. And you know what? God doesn't do that to us either. He didn't go, Well done, good job. You, you brought it down here. I just wanted us to see that illustration. We cannot bring that God down to our level. We need to go to His level need to study, approve, workmen are not ashamed. We need to get in there and see it. So the next thing that I want us to see in here, the temple is up. They repent of their defiling themselves. See, the people defiled themselves. They brought God down to their level. He gave them clear commands. Do not do X. Do not do Y. Do not do, do Z. And you know what? They did it anyway. They brought his standards down. But they begin to see, we have brought God's standards down. We need to repent and confess. You'll, you'll hear this over and over through this book and through a lot of the chronicles and different things of the Old Testament. The people saw that they were sinners, and they repented and confessed of their sin. So now we see that the things that are built, the things that are happening, um, chapter by chapter review. I'm going to go really quick, okay? Because I want to catch us up. Chapter 1, the overview there, the heading of the messages is basically what I'm going to give you. Just the headings of what we saw, what we studied. Chapter 1 was um, the burden servant Nehemiah went back to rebuild God's place. He, he went back to replace what God had put on his heart to do. Y'all remember that? He, he, God told him, hey, go back, restore, build, redo all this stuff. And he did. And we called that message, Building a Legacy of Prayer. Um, was that message chapter two work before the work i don't remember i don't know if y'all remember that one we made some t-shirts sent our youth off out to colorado in it doing the work before the work um he had to examine the job nehemiah had to go by the dark and and look at to see what all was damaged what all was tore up he had to examine what what it is that he had to repair so he he went in walked throughout the city saw all the damage he had to do the work before the work that message was a legacy of prayer. He had to pray and ask God, what, what, how can I do this? How can I? Because you know what? We can't do all that in our own strength, right? We can't do it. And that was uh, building a legacy re requires planning. Chapter 3, we read how uh, they worked shoulder to shoulder. I don't know if y'all remember that one. They were putting the stone. I love it that you're shaking your head. Yes, that means you remember. Thank you, Lord. They, they were putting the stones back together. It talked about tribe after tribe, how they worked, how they put it back together. And they did that work shoulder to shoulder. That's how we need to work to rebuild the kingdom. We need to work shoulder to shoulder in unity, in one accord, putting it back together. So it used the word after him and next to him 28 times 28 times that means it must have meant something that they were doing that work together building a legacy with community and unity was the, uh, the title of that chapter and then building in your life so that's what we were talking about there the war of words this trying to build back and opposition came but you know what God told them do not be afraid and I tell you that this morning too if you're working to get your relationship back on track with the Lord and you're studying His Word and seeking Him, just keep on keeping on. Stay faithful. 
Stay faithful to him. He'll put it back together for you. Do not be afraid. Remember the Lord. All right, so our God will fight for us was chapter 4. Chapter 5, internal pressure can cause us to uh, have a great outcry. You know what's happening internally, things that are happening to us. You know, a lot of times when we're under pressure, we'll cry out, kind of like a teapot, tea kettle, right? You put the water in there and you turn up the heat. It starts to boil. It does what? Whistles. Good job. It does. So internal pressure can do that. Six is opposition. See, opposition is they were building the wall, putting all of it back together. They were working shoulder to shoulder, boulder to boulder. You know what? Opposition's still going to come. Let me just tell you that in your Christian walk. However faithful, however legacy, whatever's going on, there's always going to continually be opposition in your life. I have to remind myself that all the time. When I'm hanging out my big lip because somebody hurt my feelings or something, I'm just sitting there. You know what? Opposition's always going to come. Just keep, stay faithful. Just stay faithful. I say that with y'all. It's chapter 6. The walls were finished. You can see it in 615. They were finished in a record time, 52 days. That's massive for how big. I think it was four miles of wall put back together, and they did it all in 52 days. And then chapter 7, watchmen on the wall. Um, if God's people don't protect what they have accomplished for the Lord, the enemy will come in and take it over. you got to have watchmen on the wall. All that means is we really need somebody in our life holding us accountable. We need other people doing this life with us together. We need folks holding us accountable. Chapter 8, the, um, the physical is in place. They hung the gates. They hung the wall. They commissioned it. Um, their spiritual things had now begun to be in order. And then now you see this this time of, of, of putting it back together, this time of getting this spiritual house in order. You'll see that in 7, um, 73 through 1039. We'll, we'll kind of build more on that as we walk through this. The people gathered as one and renewed their covenant with God. Ezra the priest, it was the right person at the right time. Why was Ezra the right person that knew how to handle the word? Because he was studied. I, 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 this is the one thing in this whole study that really has stuck with me. He knew inside and out, word for word, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Can you imagine knowing that much Bible? Well, this guy was studied. They had the right person at the right time to begin to open up the law, open up God's word, and to see how they had failed him and how they could restore their relationship. And so that's kind of what we're seeing here a whole lot that this word had begun to penetrate their heart. You know, that's what God's word does. When we get in it to it and we hear it and we study it, it begins to penetrate those hard places. It breaks that fallow ground and we get to have that communion with God again because he breaks up those places and restores that. And then <laughs> comes about December, early December, and we stop the series why? Because Christmas was coming. We wanted to start talking about, you know, Christmas and what all was happening in the Christmas season, built up to Christmas and everything. And then we began the 28 days. Y'all remember the 28 days of prayer where we were wanting to have revival and, and see God do something supernatural, staying in the book, studying and reading. That's kind of where we went through. And now we're kind of getting back again. Chapter 9 was renewing the relationship, and then revival breaks out. It's kind of how we kind of transitioned in there. We saw God do some mighty things in revival, didn't we? We saw some folks get saved. We saw folks' lives change. You know, and I don't remember the numbers and all that, but I know this. I know some people were changed because I start seeing people, God do things in people's lives, and it's evident. You can see where God's moving and what he's doing. So revival breaks out it breaks out there and the people wanted to understand and hear the word of god they wanted to hear it for themselves speak share it they stood up so i don't need to hear that today i'm gonna just sit there for a few minutes and just kind of tune it out every message that you ever hear requires a response it's not just to sit there and just say okay i checked a box i heard what it had to say and i'm good for another week and i'll come back then no it's to penetrate those hard places and, and then you hear it. But you, you know what we're supposed to do with it after that? Give it away. 
We're to give it away. We're to share it with other people as we do life and as we move around and we, 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 we go and come. We're to tell people the good news of Jesus, how he saved us, how he changed us, and how he did a great work inside of our life. See, because once God gets inside you and begins to do the walk, the walk, the work inside you, you know what happens? You talk different. Because the things that you used to want to talk about, you know, I, I, I like to talk about hunting and everything, but I sure like talking about Jesus a whole lot more. That's an icebreaker. I can get into somebody's conversation with hunting, ESPN, you know, this, this, that, and the other. Um, but you know what? I want to try to move that conversation. Life. They knew all the sin that they had done in their life. Here's where the change starts happening. This is when the chatter turns different. If you have your book turn it and look at verse 6 you alone are the Lord you have made heaven the heaven and the heavens with all their host the earth and everything in it the seas and all that is in them and you preserve them all the host of heaven worship you see that's who we are to be now the God of heaven has quickened our heart. The God of heaven, we see that we rebelled, we turned from him, and this is what we cry out. You alone are God. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't believe in a big bang theory. I don't believe in all that kind of thing. I believe that God made it. He said it, I believe. He put it all together. And you know what? They understood, they began to understand Genesis. In the beginning, who created God created. They knew it. They had heard it. Nehemiah and Ezra are teaching them. You, and they declare it. Remember that responsive reading? That's what they're saying back. You alone are the Lord. You created it all. Then verse 7, You are the Lord God who chose Abram and brought him out of Ur and out of the Chaldeans and gave him the name of Abraham. You found his heart faithful before you and made a covenant with him to give the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Pezzarites, the Jebusites, and the Gergesites. A lot of ites there. He gave all that land over to his people, and they remembered that. He gave it to all his descendants. And you performed your works or your words. So I want to go back to the first point on here. They prayed out loud to God. These three statements, you are. You know, there ought to be a declaration in your life of when God saved you and changed you, and you can say, you are the God who saves. You are the God who transforms. You are the God that can get a hold to a heart and break it and transform it and turn it into a follower. Because he can. You are. You have a you are statement? You are God or a but God statement of how he changed you and did a mighty work in your life. That's what they're responsively calling back and saying, you are, you are God. He made the heavens. He made the seas. He made the, the, the heavens worship him. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Hear, O Lord, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. The reason why they know this is because it's the Shema. It's the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. He's bringing it back to their mind. That's why they can quote it. They know it. And these words which I command you today shall be on your heart. See, when God does a work in your life, He changes your heart. He begins to put His word in there. He begins to put His thoughts, His ideas. He has a standard that we need to live up to. And He gives it to us. Hear, O Israel. And He begins to command them and show them, Today you shall, uh, shall be your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. Let me ask you this. When's the last time you taught your children the Word of God? How about your grandchildren? I got some grand, a grandbaby now. That's what we're to do. I, look, I love sports. I love hunting. I love every extracurricular activity you can probably do and, and have done and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's a failure if I'm not producing and putting the Word of God inside my children too. I love hunting. It's fun. It produces food for my family and all that kind of stuff. It, it's gave me good memories with both my boys and my daughter. Um, I was with her. She killed her first deer. I, I have all those great memories. But I'm going to tell you what, some greater memories are when they got saved. And, and, and here's the cool thing. 
I wasn't, I wasn't always a preacher in this deal. I, I wasn't even always a, a follower. I was kind of a fan for a long time. But here's the deal. When God saved me and, and he called me to preach and I obeyed and listened to that call, you know what? I got to baptize my baby. That's cool. Follow him. Trust him. Lean on to him. He is the one that does all these different things. You are teach them diligently that's the thing with train up a child in the way he should go and he's when, when he's old he won't depart training is a whole lot different than dumping them off training is you spending one-on-one -on -one time hours upon hours precept upon precept principle upon principle you know what even when we're going down the road and, and and having different conversations she don't even know sometimes i'm putting bible in her we're talking about different things, and I'm saying, well, is that the right way to do that? Is, is that what God's standards are? Is that what man's standards are? Tell me what, what you're thinking here. Diligently teaching our children is different than dumping them off in the daycare or dumping them off in, in the youth department, dumping them off somewhere. Training them is spending time. All throughout the Word of God, it tells you. Paul says, you don't just stand there in, uh, like you're boxing the air. You actually attempt it. You box it. You train up. You train your body, right, Brother Chris? I bet if I went over there right now and pulled your shirt up, you got a six-pack of abs because you train, right? You train, don't you? I can pull up my shirt right now, and you'll see a keg. <laughs> or that, that just means fat. It doesn't mean anything else that you can run through your head to think through. It just means I love to eat, and I'm building a shed. It's just fat. It's just growing. He trains up his body. I used to train mine, but that's how we're to do our children. Train them. They'll, do you spend hours in the gym? So training takes time, doesn't it? Train up a child. Train. This is what he's This is what Deuteronomy is telling us. This is what Nehemiah is telling them, and they're seeing it. They're seeing life change. They're seeing something happen different in their lives because they're training. And when you sit down in your house, you shall talk about the Word of God. Let me ask you that. When you're sitting around the table and you're, you're eating and, or, or you're sitting around, are you talking about the things of God or the things of the world? You can loop them in. But man, we need to, this is it. This is training. This is teaching us right here how to raise our kids, how to build a legacy, how many of you have, have done that in your children and, and, and spent that time with them. But if you haven't, this is time to wake up just like they woke up. They see how the importance of hearing, understanding, knowing, and living out God's Word. He says, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be on the frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on the door, doorpost of your house and on your gates. And then verse 7, God made a covenant with Abraham. Do you remember that? Genesis 17, 4 and 9. See, it, it's written here, but you go back even further back in Old Testament, and in, in, in this Genesis right here, as for... As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make many nations of you, and kings shall come from you. If you, you, ought, you ought to highlight that one, because we're going to come back to that. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you in the land which you are a stranger in the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Verse 9, And God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you through the generations. So God gave it to him. He gave them the promise. He showed them out of you. This is where it's all going to take place. We're going to come back to it. I'm going to keep going. In verse 9, you are righteous. God is faithful with his promise. He had already made their fathers a covenant promise. And I will give, I will be your God and you will be my people. So he made that promise to them. Genesis 12, 1. I'm not going to read it because I'm running out of time. 
but he gives them this blessing and how he changed your name. He gave them a whole new country. He gave them a name, descendants, Genesis 15, 4 and 6. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall, I'm getting bad reports. I've had this happen in my life. You love me. Now, if I could come over here and get something out of Melvin, what, what can I get from me? A pen, okay. I see a pen in your pocket. I'll give it back to you, I promise. He gave it to me. It's because he wanted a relationship together. And he said, look, I want to freely just give you something. I went to your house this weekend, this last week. I told y'all a minute ago I like to eat, right? He knows I like that jelly that they make. I didn't even ask for it. You know what he did? He just went over in his cupboard, and he reached inside... And he gave me a jug of jelly, a jar or whatever it's called. Because you know why? I grew up on peanut butter and jelly. I can eat it four times, five times. I love that stuff. Man, it sticks to you, though. <laughs> Kylie, I'm going to tell you, it sticks to you. Something about peanut butter and some good Mayhaw jelly. It sticks to you. But you know what? God gave us something far greater than jelly. He gave us his blood gift, his son. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Without the shedding of blood, see, you can't get there on your own. You, you can desire a relationship, you can want a relationship, but if the Holy Spirit doesn't draw you, you cannot come to salvation. The Holy Spirit draws us. It convicts us. You know how it draws us? It breaks down that pride in our life. It breaks down that rebellion, and we see that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I can't save myself. He provided the way. I couldn't make a way. He made a way where there was no way. I can't get there on my own. Man, I know you're tripping back there, Steve. I'm walking way too fast, and he's trying to keep up with me on a camera. But I'm going to tell you that this morning. God loves you. He wants a relationship with you. He desires it. But you have to realize you are a sinner in need of a Savior. You can't get there on your own. It's not monopoly. It's not go until you cross, go and collect $200. It's when the Holy Spirit of God draws you. So I'm going to tell you this morning, if the Holy Spirit's convicting you of your sin, the Holy Spirit of God is speaking to you, you know what today is? Today is the day of salvation. Today, if the Holy Spirit of God is speaking to you and He's revealing your lostness to you, you can be saved. With the mouth, one confesses, unto, uh, confesses sin, and with the heart, believes unto righteousness. So you confess your sin with your mouth, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you shall, not if, not maybe, you can be saved. So let's do this. Let's stand. Let's have a time of invitation. If the God of heaven is speaking to your heart today through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, there's going to be men down here. I'm going to, I'm going to stay down here too. If you need to be saved and you don't quite all the way understand it, you don't know what's happening or what, right here, right now, we can share with you how to be saved. And you know what? We won't even do it right here and embarrass you. We'll bring you off into a room. We'll open up God's Word together. And we'll see what it looks like to be saved. And you know what? You won't five years from now go, man, I wonder if I'm saved. Man, I hope I'm saved. You know what? You'll know that you're saved. You can trust and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He can save you. He will save you. So whatever you need today from God, you need prayer, these guys are right here. They'll pray with you. You need some things that's just built up in your life and you want some time of prayer with somebody praying over you and with you, these guys will pray with you. You're looking for a church to be actively a part of, a member, somebody that, man, you can plug in. And you can be active and you can see, man, look, we, we showed you all those ministries last week. You can, you can just fall in and, and go to work for the Lord Jesus. We'd love to see that. If you're looking for a church home, we'd love to have you. But here's the deal. If you need to be saved, don't leave this building today going, man, I'm under conviction. I, I, I got to get out of there. No, today, grab one of these guys by the hand. Let them walk you through. Father, God, this is your time. Lord, I know in my heart I can't save one person in here. I know that. But God, I know that you can. And we believe that and we trust that. 
And so, Father, if you're doing work in anybody's life in here today, Lord, give them the, the boldness to step out, grab one of these guys and say, the God of heaven is speaking in my heart today and I need to be saved. God, we love you. We thank you for what you're doing. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing. You can pray. Do whatever it is that God puts on your heart to do. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for the food for our senior adults because I know they're getting hungry and it's time for them to go and be a part of this but let me just say this as we let them go out and if God's still working on your heart and moving and you just couldn't quite get up the gumption to get out there and have prayer over you or whatever you needed this morning I'm going to be down here for a few minutes if you're a first time guest I'd love to meet you I'm not going to go out there today I'm going to stay right here just in case somebody needs to be saved or something's going on in your life but I know God's moving. I know He's speaking because His Word says it won't return back void. Father, God, we thank You for the day. Lord, we thank You for our senior adults. God, just the, um, 
the legacy, Lord, of faith that many of them have here. Lord, how they diligently serve. God, thank you for them. God, I, I pray that, Lord, just the days ahead, they just stay faithful. And, Lord, just listen to that cloud of witnesses, as Hebrew said, that they're cheering them on. Stay faithful. Keep going. Lord, we thank you for it. Lord, bless their food. Bless the food that we get to eat and be a part of. God, just strengthen us, nourish us, and we thank you for everything that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.